Hey guys, today's video is going to be on the induction heater. I finally got it sort of serviceable, I guess. Um, before I get into that though, I think I'm going to do some quick channel updates. So the first one is just that the jeweler's lathe is progressing well. Um, you can see I've got this, uh, I sort of want to call it a compound slide, but it's, it's like missing the slide. Um, I'll have to get into the kinematics of how this thing is going to work at some other time, but Basically, it's a shiny thing. It's made out of bronze, and it seems to work quite well. So, yep, that's uh, that's the update for the jeweler's lathe. I'm also going to be changing the name of my channel, and I got this new light on a stick. So, you'll never see this, but hopefully it makes the video look a lot nicer. I just have to find a way to mount it. The plan so far is just to use this extrusion stuff, but we'll see. I may end up making a little frame around my filming area. It's going to look a bit like the stage at a rock show for hamsters, but I'm okay with that because it'll help me make better videos, which is something I'm still trying to improve on doing. So one of my New Year's resolutions this year was to finish more projects, I guess. Um, I really like starting projects, but finishing them is a little eh for me. Um, I don't know if it's that I lose interest or I design myself into a corner, or I don't have the technical skills to continue them. Those all kind of sound like excuses, though. I think it's just me getting distracted fairly easily, so... Um, <laughs> I want to say I finished the induction heater, but there's one more thing I want to try, and then, like, does that deserve a new video? I don't know. I want to get back into the CNC mini lathe in a very exciting and substantial way, so I'm pretty excited about doing that. Um, I think... I think it's going to look a bit like a big step backwards, but hopefully it goes forwards in a more predictable and, uh, you know, finite way, I guess. So in terms of changing channel name, I've been thinking about doing this for a while. Um, I really don't like the name HLAPS1990. It is really just my, one of my sort of general purpose online handles that, you know, I... Not sure why I use it. Um, HLAPS1990, I used to work in construction to help pay my way through school. And um, I picked up this nickname, Hot Laps. Basically, I used to work stripping foundations. Yes, I was a stripper. What that involves is going around the foundations, basically pulling the forms off after the foundation was poured. Um, and I guess one day I, I was confused or something and I went around the foundation 10 times in a row and everyone's like, hey, it's Hot Laps. I guess hot laps is a NASCAR thing where you go around the track at full speed, but just for practice, something like that. I don't know. Anyways, that's where the name comes from, and it's really stupid. The thing I really don't like about it is just when people ask, like, oh, what's your channel called? It's HLAPS, that's H-L-A-P-S, and uh, 1990. Yeah, just the date. Yeah. Um, it makes it hard to sort of communicate that, and also, I, I don't know, I'm sort of sick of looking at it, to be honest. Um... So, I've been planning for a while on changing the name, and with that, I'm going to hopefully have a new little logo thing. And, uh, yeah, that's, I think that's mostly for myself, but, uh, yeah, you'll be seeing that come up soon, so don't be too surprised. So, it's probably a little longer than I sort of prefer to get videos out, but I actually made a point of telling myself when I started this channel, I'm not going to say, like, oh, I'll do a video every week, or, you know, whatever. Um, I think a lot of people do that, and a lot of people sort of let themselves down, get discouraged, you know, stop doing videos. So, yeah, I sort of would prefer to wait until I have decent content before I hammer out videos. That being said, I finally finished the induction heater. Um, finished is a strong word. Uh, I got it working, and I think it's going to work fairly reliably from now on. I'm going to put a box around it, and then I'll call it finished. Maybe even a nice little carry handle. Yeah, something like that. So, if you go back a few videos, um, way back when to before they had proper lighting or microphones, you'll see that I did do an initial video on induction heaters. And basically, <laughs> I broke mine before I could get any really good footage. I got a little bit of use out of it, but what basically happened was I ran it at too much of a duty cycle for too long. And... Uh, I think the coil heated up because of the infrared radiation coming off the hot parts. And then that in turn, the infrared radiation too close to the electronics board, I think it melted some stuff. I think it still works, but I'm, I'm just not going to try that. Just a quick recap, the way these induction heaters work, basically they'll have 
a coil like this and they have a current that flips back and forth really, really fast. This creates magnetic fields that switch back and forth really quickly inside of um, conductive materials. And these are called eddy currents. And eddy currents are a major source of inefficiency in a lot of systems. And they basically uh, waste magnetic energy as heat. So in this case, we want the heat because the whole purpose is to heat stuff up. So that's good. So if you look at something like a transformer here, if you look closely at it, let's see if I can get that. This is a, this is a little heavier than I'd prefer to hold up. Um, so you see it's actually made of all these laminations. This is also a special kind of steel that's actually high in silicon, and that actually resists eddy currents. So when this um, alternates current back and forth, the eddy currents want to travel this way, I believe, and these layers of steel have lacquer in between them, and it's actually not conductive in that direction. So you get smaller eddy currents and you get less heating. I think that's the idea. I'm not super well versed in the electronics behind this. By the way, spot welder anyone? We'll see. <laughs> so anyways, as I was saying, I overheated my last induction heater, murdered it, that sucks. Went out and bought a new one because they're like $30 each. And uh, this time I implemented some active cooling. I've got a fan on it. I've got it on a little chassis now. And I've got some, uh, I think it's mineral wool or something. Uh, obviously not long enough, but uh, I'm hoping this will protect the coil from getting a lot of... Um, radiated heat from the workpiece. So let's just go through this quickly and see sort of what the setup is. Firstly, I have 48 volt power supply. These things are like a dime a dozen on Amazon. Um, this is the actual induction heater unit here uh, with the coil. I actually, I lost the coil that came with the unit for some stupid reason, so I had to bend my own, which uh, it sort of went better than I expected, but uh, I don't know, there's some kinks in it. Um, this is a cheap, uh, PC processor pump, I guess, for water cooling PCs. I um, I had a pump that I was going to use, and I was like, oh, I got to make a reservoir for that. And then I was designing this whole system, and I was like, you know what? I should probably just go on Amazon and check and see if there's something that's exactly what I'm looking for on sale. And sure enough, yep, I'll link to that in the video description, but it does the trick perfectly. I've got a fan on here that's blowing heat over the capacitors. Uh, I'm not sure how hot they get. There's some MOSFETs on there. I know they get really hot, so hoping some of the air cooling is going to help. And uh, yeah, in the back here, I've just got the, uh, you see the plumbing is fairly simple. Uh, I've got some hose clamps on here to hold that together. I actually made these contacts out of solid copper. I machined them. Uh, I've seen some other people use banana plug connectors, which can handle high current. And then they'll have uh, sort of just wires going to this and they can connect all kinds of accessories. I think that's pretty cool. I may go that direction at some point, but we'll see. So the wiring's pretty straightforward. What I've got is a, 48 volt power supply, so that's getting power from mains. That comes in here. I, I did a sort of diagram in the last video. I'll just let you look at that if you're curious. Um, I've got the positive of the 48 volts going directly into the induction heater. And then I've actually got that coming off and going to a DC-DC uh, DC converter. I think it's called a buck converter. And that uh, knocks the 48 volts down to 12 volts and that powers the pump and the fan. So pretty straightforward. Like I mentioned in the last video, these things, um, they don't like soft starts because um, it's basically a dead short. So if it's a, a soft start, it doesn't start oscillating and you just get all this current being dumped through the coil. And um, it burns everything out really quickly. So I've got a switch on the DC line here. You see when I switch it, it turns on. It's nice and quiet. Um, yeah, I've got the reservoir about half full now. I think that's going to be fine. And just playing around with it, it doesn't seem like it's heating up or dangerously hot anywhere. I have noticed that my mains uh, lines are exposed in a few places, so I think I'm going to have to tidy that up. When I put this in the box, I'll have a nice little panel for it, I think. But for now, it's uh, I think it's video worthy, so here it is. Um, Alright, so before I kill this one, let's heat some stuff up. All right, so this is turned on. The first question I'm gonna address, someone asked me a while ago, they were wondering if a cheapy induction heater like this could anneal the ends of ball screws for machining. So I've got some uh, case hardened rod here. And I'm just gonna poke it in there. Um, I've noticed that smaller things actually take longer than I would expect to heat up. And I think that's because the coil diameter is too large.
All right, so I'm not sure how well that's showing up on the camera, but we've got sort of a uh, light orange glow to it. Uh, you can't really see that at all on the camera. So, I mean, I would be inclined to say that this would be good for annealing. Like I said, the coil diameter is wrong. I don't remember where I read this, but I, I read somewhere that the ideal coil size is two-thirds larger than the workpiece. So the workpiece should be a third the size of the coil. Um, I'm not sure where I got that from. You should certainly check it out, but uh, yeah. Mm, that was nice and hot. There you can see, yeah, it was, it was actually hot. That was um, maybe bearing steel. Maybe it was uh, 1045, something like that. I'm gonna try a really high carbon steel now. Uh, so I'm gonna use an old valve spring. That is smelly. All right, that didn't actually heat up as much as I thought it would. Hmm. All right, I guess next up, maybe we can try some uh, stainless. This is 304 stainless. I'm not. I'm not 100% sure this will work on stainless. I, as I recall, it's based on conductivity, not ferromagnetism, but um, we'll see. <laughs> All right, so that's definitely getting warm, but no, it broke 100 Celsius didn't heat up quite as dramatically as the carbon steel does. So having played with this a bit, you'll notice that there is pretty hot water in here. Um, I'm going to let it cool down a little bit. I think that's totally reasonable. Um, I think running this continuously is going to be probably asking too much of such a cheap unit. So yeah, we'll see. Um, there's other things I could do to cool that down too. I could use some kind of a heat sink, but yeah, that's toasty. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just going to let it wait for a little bit and then uh, hopefully it cools down by itself. Another person asked me about heat shrink tooling. Heat shrink tooling is basically a tool holder that has an undersized hole in the end. And what you do is you heat it up and you can put an end mill in there. And then as it cools down, it grips the end mill from the outside because um, as metal heats, it expands. As it cools, it contracts. And what you get is a super, super accurately positioned cutter, and you get a really, really high grip strength. So the trick isn't getting the end mill in, it's getting the end mill out. What we're going to be evaluating here is if the induction heater can heat this up fast enough that it opens and the end mill falls out before the end mill heats up and expands as well. Because if it heats up too slowly, the end mill is also going to expand and it's going to stay stuck in there. This was graciously lent to me by the machine shop at my work. Uh, he even gave me a new end mill to put in it, and uh, we're going to see if this works. I'm going to put this garnet underneath to catch the end mill falling out. Um, I th think that should be everything. I'm just going to hold the holder. If it gets too hot, I'm going to put it on this uh, mineral wool over here to cool down. Um, it's a pretty big piece of steel, so I'm not anticipating burning myself, but there's always that if I do. All right, so let's switch it on. Everything still works, that's good. And... Yeah, I don't think that's gonna work. That's, um... So it feels pretty spicy, but um, I think it took so long the end mill actually heated up too. So that's unfortunate, but um, good to know anyways. So this is, it's a thousand watt induction heater and this power supply is 48 volts, 7.8 amps. So under half of uh, recommended power. So 
If you really juice this thing up, then uh, it may very well be good enough, but I can tell you, even at half the rated power, it gets pretty warm. All right, so I guess important takeaways. Um, it certainly does extend the lifetime to uh, pump water through the coils, which makes sense. Um, it's also kind of nice having everything on the chassis so I don't have to carefully position all the wires before turning it on and stuff. Um, I don't think this is going to work too great for heat shrink tooling. That being said, I didn't try it with its full power. Don't know if I want to try it with its full power. But it certainly does the trick for the kind of stuff I'm going to be doing. So I guess thinking about it, I guess I can't say that this induction heater can't do heat shrink tooling. I'm underdriving it so much, it's probably not a fair assessment of sort of the upper limit of its capabilities. That being said, um, it certainly does the trick for the kind of stuff I want to do, which is some, you know, light heat treating of small parts. The pump seems to help quite a bit. Um, I might put a larger reservoir in, but I think I'm going to call this finished for now. Um, I'll put a case over it and I'll put that new power supply on and I might do a little addendum video, but I'm not going to sort of dwell on it for a lot longer. All right, I hope you guys enjoy the video. I'll see you next time for probably a jeweler's lathe video. Cheers! Thank you.